I will now move on to our next speaker, Rosleni Ubinas. Rosleni is the youth representative to the UN for the US Baha'i Office of Public Affairs. One of her roles is to explore ways youth can contribute to the betterment of society by working with non-governmental organizations and other youth advocates on issues such as racial inequality, advancement of women, and the role of religion in society. Her previous work experience includes adolescent counseling along with development for academic and nonprofit organizations. Over to you, Rosalie. Thank you so much, Lily. I'm really happy to be here today. Thank you, Khalid, for the in-depth explanation of the Youth 2030, the arm of the Agenda 2030. And thank you, Janina, for detailing the youth involvement in the peace security agenda. The inclusion of youth in spaces of importance within the United Nations has increased since I first became a youth representative. The Department of Global Communications has taken the lead in creating unique spaces where youth voices matter. Established in 2009, the Department of Global Communications Civil Society Youth Representative Pr Program brings together young people ages 18 to 32, working within and or leading organizations that are in association with DGC and focus on issues of the agenda of the United Nations. The successes, enthusiasm, and high visibility of young people in the 66 United Nations DPI NGO, now DGC CSO, conference in Gyeongju, Korea in 2016, provided the impulse needed to create this new entity, the Youth Representative Steering Committee, which I had the honor of chairing for four years. Since my engagement in this space back in 2017, the steering committee has grown in capacity and responsibility. In the beginning, the ask of the committee was strictly limited to advisory capacity, but then the youth have gone on to organize the youth hub in both the 67th and 68th civil society conferences with the 68th conference in Salt Lake City being our biggest feat yet. Organizing a space for 3,000 young people to meaningfully engage in discourses related to building inclusive and sustainable cities to drafting a youth climate compact, a document outlining actions youth around the world promise to take to mitigate the climate emergency. This document was presented as part of the conference package to the members of the General Assembly by the then president of the 73rd session, Maria Fernanda Espinosa Garces. This conference was actually pretty legendary. Um, we had about 6,000 attendees and half of them were youth. And our youth hub actually ran out of capacity because so many people wanted to really see our program. And because of the involvement of DGC, um, I was able to have an informal conversation with Allison Smale, who was then the undersecretary for, for global communications at that time. So since then, in light of the COVID pandemic, the Youth Steering Committee has taken a shift from organizing in-person events like sessions of the chat series to launching a podcast, Storytelling with a Purpose, to highlight those youth voices who are doing great work in the community in community-specific implementation of Agenda 2030. Ms. Amina Mohammed, the Deputy Secretary General, made a keen observation during the opening remarks of the Ecosoc Youth Forum. The youth involved are privileged, equipped with formal education. So with this, part of the work of the youth in, our, in these spaces is to work towards decentralizing the theoretical and academic voices and supporting them with the findings and knowledge from youth who are doing the work on the ground, regardless of education level and proficiency in UNEs, Years ago, I attended the inauguration of the Columbia University's Women, Peace, and Security program. I'm sure you know about it, Janina. And the, the lead of the program is Nobel Peace Laureate, Lema Bowie. She said something along the lines of, after years in the field, I was told to get an education so I can be sure of what I was doing. In university, I realized I know all these things. I simply never had the language for it. All this background to say that when people who hold institutional power make a concerted effort to include young people, the effects can be powerful. I can't laud the successes of the steering committee without mentioning the team at DGC CSO unit headed by Howard Diallo, who nurtured this program since its inception and is constantly working on having youth voices in higher level decision making spaces. Right before the pandemic, myself and a couple of colleagues we were involved very heavily in the planning of the UN platform in the World Majlis in Dubai, but unfortunately due to COVID, plans had to shift and our involvement was limited. Something else that um, Ms. Mohammed mentioned during the ECOSOC um, plenary, perhaps there needs to be more communication on how much their voices matter. There needs to be a conversation regarding expectations, what older colleagues expect of their younger colleagues and what the youth expect from their participation. 
So considering these monumental changes that happened in the last couple of decades, namely um, technology and the way that the world's able to communicate because of the technology, there, I'm very curious about this question about expectations. I wonder if there is a balance between appreciation of the systems in place that allow for these things to happen and for the protection of the human rights, while maintaining flexibility to explore innovative, creative ways of doing things differently. So I'm hoping in the series, we're able to have these conversations to ask these questions, like the ones I have and some other questions. And I'm really looking forward to us having a multi-week conversation throughout the series on really discussing how we can all play a role in the implementation of Agenda 2030. How can we think strategically about finding the truth in our experiences, planning the next steps forward, and how we could all have a part in doing this together. So thank you so much, Lily, for this opportunity.